what we do to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda are the R2 Board of Education norms, which are available. And the next item is the approval of the agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda of November 15, 2022, regular open session meeting. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. Next, we have the MSBA monthly board report. Welcome to the November edition of the Missouri School Boards Association's Board Report. We begin with a look at efforts to combat the teacher shortage issue in Missouri. In October, the Teacher Recruitment and Retention Blue Ribbon Commission submitted its report to the Missouri State Board of Education. The commission made nine recommendations for lawmakers to address the educator shortage. The State Board of Education approved the commission's nine recommendations and pledged to bring the findings to the public and lawmakers. Missouri's teacher shortage is most urgent at the elementary school level with 1,561 vacancies last year. There were an additional 852 openings for special education teachers, according to the Education Department. Former MSBA President and Blue Springs School District Board President Rhonda Gilstrap was a member of the Blue Ribbon Commission. She explains the process for the recommendations. The process included many facets. First and foremost, members needed to be educated on the landscape of public education and the current state of the Missouri teacher workforce. We collected data from other neighboring states to see a regional comparison, which included average starting teacher salary, um, the education wage gap, as well as benefit packages for teachers, for all educators. We also researched the retention rate of new teachers. The commission has prioritized its recommendations into three timeframes. We developed a set of recommendations that were categorized by immediate, short-term priorities, and then long-term priorities. And I think that Coming from the commission, the number one priority under immediate was to increase the starting teacher salary uh, in state statute and continue uh, funding to support the new teacher baseline salary grant program. Short-term priorities included establishing a fund to support LEAs, which are local education agencies, and providing increased salaries, and then increased support for mental health resources for teachers, school leaders, and staff. And then under long-term priorities, um, a couple that were included were salary supplements for filling high need positions, and, and then as well as offering salary supplements for teachers with national board certification. Although the recommendations have been submitted, Gilstrap said the work is far from done. Our boards of education in Missouri are diligently working to find solutions and we will continue to do so as we strive to strengthen that workforce. Now, our work is not done as far as the commission. Uh, the next thing we really need to look at, and I, I know there's not a school district in the state of Missouri that doesn't hasn't come across this, but uh, another committee is, is formed to look at the culture and climate. The State Board of Education, in conjunction with the Blue Ribbon Commission, is hosting a series of public engagement meetings in each of Missouri's eight congressional districts. Check the DESE website for the recommendations made to the State Board, as well as the dates and locations for the public engagement meetings. It won't be long until the Missouri General Assembly convenes for its 2023 regular session in January. Education issues are likely to be the subject of considerable discussion, as is the case most years in the Missouri Legislature. MSBA's Director of Governmental Relations, Brant Shields, expects certain issues to come up immediately in the session. Nothing is really new in education in the policy that the legislature looks at every year. In fact, issues that probably came up, especially that were hot topic issues that didn't pass in the last legislative session or even the legislative session the year before that are probably going to come back again. You know, expect to see things talking about charter schools, talking about uh, virtual schools, talking about um, expansion of vouchers. Those are probably going to be big hot topic issues coming into session this year. Between now and the start of the session, there are things that board members can do. 
You know, board members right now, uh, especially with those legislators who are just newly elected in this November election, get the chance to know those legislators. You don't want your first opportunity talking to them being when it's time for them to take a vote in January, February, or March. Start building that relationship now. Bring them into your schools. Have them know what great things are happening in your districts because that's going to help you tell your story when it's time to make a difference in the legislative session. The MSBA Action Center has a new look, but will host the same helpful resources to assist you in being an effective advocate for your public schools and the students you serve. This includes legislative summaries, tracking of committee hearings when the legislature is in session, and calls to action on critical issues. That's it for this month's edition of the MSBA Board Report. Thanks for allowing us to have some time at your board meeting, and thank you for all that you do to ensure all students succeed. I just want to point out there are many things on that list. <coughs> Immediate, short term, and long term, not all, but some that we've accomplished here. And that's why one of the reasons we have a great district that we have. So um, that's all. Next, we have approval of the consent agenda. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda item as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have the guidelines for public participation. Board members and administrators will listen to concerns and will respond when appropriate by mail or telephone at a later date. The public comment period will not exceed 15 minutes. No individual will be permitted to speak more than once during this period, and each speaker will be allotted no more than five minutes. Per policy BDDH-1, public participation at board meetings, the following guidelines and procedures will be followed. In order to speak during public participation, a public comment form must be filled out and submitted to the board president prior to the beginning of the meeting. The public comment period will not exceed 15 minutes. No individual will be able to speak more than once. Next, we have the report of the superintendent. Thank you. Um, our first item is always notes of appreciation. We do not have any to share with you. Sorry about that. Um, next, I wanted to talk, uh, share information from parent-teacher conferences, which were held on October 27th. Um, here on the slide, you see, and in board docs, we have the same data. Um, the percentage of participation by Bill uh, Bloomsdale Elementary's participation were 91%, and I'm going to round. St. Genevieve Elementary was 93, middle school was 30, uh, 31, and the high school was almost 36. When you compare that to last year's data on this slide, um, the high school had a slight jump in their participation, the other buildings had a slight decline. So, um, those are the numbers from our parent teacher conference and the parents who some of those conferences were in person, but some of them were online. Excuse me, Dr. Cook, is that, um, I mentioned virtual and on the phone, does that count as, like, in the, the 90 percentile? Yes, they count those in these percentages. Okay, thank you. Okay. The next item on my presentation, I want to share that Bloomsdale Elementary, uh, I received a letter, it's attached here in Board Docs from Desi, uh, from the school counseling section. Bloomsdale is the recipient of the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Geisbers Award, I think I'm saying that right, the Comprehensive School Counseling Award. Um, this acknowledges their dedicated work their receipt of the nationally recognized Missouri Program Award, which happened here in 2022. So Mrs. Rowland, um, I think Mrs. Drury, plans to be in Jefferson City on December 3rd at the State Capitol to receive that award and that recognition. Um, super proud of Bluestell Elementary, yeah. super proud of all the hard work that Mrs. Rowland put into that application. I'm thinking it took her three years to do it. So, so very impressive, very, very well deserved. If I remember right, there are 12 recipients in the state. So very proud very to be a part of that. That's awesome. Thank you. 
Um, next up, we have principal reports, and I'm excited. We have some great young presenters here to talk to you. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks again for the opportunity. Uh, may I introduce to you Miss Charlotte Mooney from the middle school. Hello. My name is Charlotte Mooney. I'm in eighth grade at St. Jen Middle School. And I just want to share with you some of the highlights that we've been having recently. So recently we had our first round of wings. We have wings once every quarter. And some of the activities we have during wings, we have basketball and volleyball board games and we can do chalk outside and Mrs. Woodard's facts three class Mrs. Woodard's Mrs. Woodward's facts three class did a project where they went down to the elementary and they had the kindergartens draw a monster on a piece of paper and then they made the monster out of belt and cotton. We had a spooky story contest in the ELA department for 8th grade and my friend Jamie Roth won. <laughs> <laughs> As you know in the middle school we call positive office referrals, dragons on fire. Some of the dragons on fire we've had in the past month are Roxana Hudson, Elijah Whitworth, Jacob Rosette, Addison Lawrence, Rebecca Palmer, Hallie Wichern, Brenna Wolk, Gabriella Watts, Ga Gracie Ladd, Jenna Miller, Gunnar Amston, Aaliyah Stafford, and Jonathan Hacker. The Spotlight Award for this month is Carla Bosler, some of the things people have said about her is, even with the chaos of her volleyball season, she continued to provide, to provide guided and meaningful instruction for her students. She engages readers and makes kids who normally don't read enjoy reading. She rocked it with volleyball girls and was still a champion in the classroom for our kids. Rockstar teacher, amazing coach. Thank you for the behind the scene work you do for our students. I have her as my ELA teacher and I personally think she's a really good teacher. Uh, some of the things we have coming up ahead are picture retakes, grading period cutoff, SUMS fall play, PJ's Donuts and Hot Chocolate, and JHS Movie Night, Winter Band Concert, and Winter Choir Concert. Good job, Charles. <laughs> Before these girls get started, I wanted to thank both parents for making the extra trip back in here to make sure that these girls could present. Um, they gave up one of their power hours and a handful of lunch and recess to make sure that they could be ready for tonight. Both girls were also out sick yesterday, so they might have pushed it just a little bit to be here tonight, so enjoy their presentation. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Emily Clayton. And I am Tess Huffman. We are here to present for St. Genevieve Elementary this evening. On the first slide, we have some events that happened during the past month. In early October, the PTO put on their Me and My events. They had dodgeball for the boys in the morning and the dance in the evening for the girls. We would like to thank the high school for allowing us to use their gym to host these events. We would like to thank Dr. Boyd for allowing us to use the high school gym for these events. We would also like to thank Citizens Electric for putting on a safety presentation for our third and fourth grade students. Citizens set up different stations at the football field and track area. Third and fourth grade students also enjoyed pizza, drinks, and a snack courtesy of Citizens Electric. We again would like to thank Dr. Boyd and Dr. Nix for allowing us to use this area for the presentation. We would like to thank St. Genevieve St. Genevieve's McDonald's for allowing us to use to have McTeacher Night. 
Part of the proceeds collected during this event were given to our building. We would also like to thank the teachers that worked the event and the families that participated. On the week of October 24th through October 27th, we celebrated Red Ribbon Week with special dress-up days, presentations, and lots of students learning the value of making good decisions for a brighter future. The first grade classrooms traveled to the Cave Conservation Center for a field trip. It was an amazing it was an opportunity to learn about animal habitats. On October thirty first, we held our Halloween parties and costume parades. Due to the parking and space issues, we had two parties: one in the morning and one in the afternoon. We were very excited to be able to invite our parents to attend the parties this year. Just recently, Mr. Keenan and Ms. Gig had lunch with the October students of the month. Each student also received a book of their choice that both Ms. Gig and Mr. Keenan signed. Of influential German people for Halloween. 
in the third picture, that is the child development class. And they're actually doing a little activity where they are pretty much copying what happens during labor and learning about that. And in the fourth photo, we have our Red Ribbon Week assembly, which was Next Era came and they sang songs and had a bit of a pep assembly while also sharing their story. So um, this month, our Rotary Student of the Month was Faith Beckett, and our Elk Student of the Month was Ari Taylor. Then we have our positive office referrals, and we have a whole lot. So we have Wyatt Spring Camper, Dustin Harris, and they're doing that time, so I can actually do them. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Barton, Sam Cairns, Kyle Fly, Jack Barlow, Ariella Taylor, Tyler Tater, Renee Bo, Addison Dyler, Leslie Dylo, Fallon Mitchell, Twice, Ezra Wolf, Carly Furneaux, Drew Merriman, Gavin Zerwick, Taylor Arm Brewster, Logan Moore, Cole Nicholson, Grant Williams, Owen Bowman, Evelyn Thomas, Mia Schweiger, Damian Wheeler, Charlie Corbett, Spice, who is here tonight, Holland Sangaro, Chase Thompson, Autumn Werner, Chase Vogt, and Aiden Rock. Okay, so next up is all about sports. So, first of all, starting off with football. They ended their season with Dexter with a win of 56 to 17. <laughs> and then their season ended 8 and 3. So for our girls' cross country, the whole team qualified for the game, but I'm going to try to make on Colin Tejero, who was a Stanford player, but she was also out of the week. She made 15 at state, and she won the last two district one. So. She's pretty, she's pretty phenomenal. Um, and our volleyball this year, uh, they may stay, yeah, but before we get there, they were the trip champs on over 25th at Flatterbird, and we had a pet bus for the first time. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. I think that that really brought the win. Yes, they did really, really well, but <laughs> the ambiance of the whole thing was just super uplifting and super fun. Um, Sectionals, we had that at home and we won quarterfinals that first one, and then obviously state at SEMO. And I'm so happy that so much to go that. We have mentioned that Web City was coming to visit, and Web City we had two of their uh, school staff come in and show them around to all of our different unified programs, things coming up in the school, and show them in the front classroom and upstairs into the classroom. And they just follow us around the whole school to get an idea. They actually now have North County is interested in walking around and learning about our unified um, programs as well. And afterwards, we went to the Common Grounds, which shows them a little bit of our community involvement with things we did as well. Um, so I think that middle school mission that they had us do this year, we did too. Um, Natty Flea was. She actually like ended up winning first place for the ninth and twelfth grade. Mr. Banks has a creative writing class that she's taking, and that was the story that she entered. So that's pretty cool. This is probably not four. Um, but she called it Creative Journal, and then I forgot that I emailed today. I emailed her today and asked her her favorite line from it. And her favorite line was, "Sienna didn't care about the mess. She never has cared about the messes. Mistakes happen, right?" <laughs> that, that, was, that was a pretty good line. <laughs> so, our teacher of the month this, this month was our middle school and high school French teacher, Ms. Bell. So, the thing that this student said about her was the reason I nominate her for Teacher of the Month is because she always does her best for her students, no matter how she is feeling or the mood she's in. <clears throat> she also has a great deal of respect for her students and treats them like their own people, like their own people, and has never made them feel uncomfortable either. 
She has always been supportive of me and wanted to help with things that were going on when I was on vacation. She went out of her way to help me get the work that I needed for the week I'd be gone. She has made learning her subject fun and willing to even teach us and help us with other work if she was able to outside of that subject. And then, we, then we have, and so we had a full day going on. So it started with students actually came this year, part of broadcasting and other students that were interested in speaking with the guest speaker, Kelly Bond. And he gave advice on reaching your dreams, your careers, going to Hawaii. And that was being able to take the flight, go to the person, make it all the way to your dream career. And he answered any questions that students had and gave the best advice that he could to help all the students that were interested. And that was during the first hour. Then we moved on to students were running around and helping to decorate the gym. Other students left to decorate the Legion Hall, where Valley students met us and we served the veterans at the region hospital luncheon. From there, we also took a group picture with the veterans, all of us together, and we then loaded up for the parade, which all of the schools were able to stand out and watch and wave them on. And then we had our sleeping for the end of the day. So I touched on this last time. Uh, we have a little bit of some updates for these. The Commons mural is finally finished and it looks amazing. Anna Nagger was able to finish with her design. Now you can see the person on the top headphones. The headphones is done with SD to a different person. And there's a quote at the top, it's actually from a song, and it says, But it also represents our goal at SGHS to make everyone feel included and at home and like family. And then we have the Reed Memorial. There's a little bit of an update on that. We have talked to artist Kinsey Wolf, and she is interested in doing a painting that was going to be Ms. Robertson and Mr. Rothstore to memorial to have a memorial from the And I think that's all. Yesterday, snack, card said dragon. I don't know who else got them, but I know I did, and I agree. That was our great song. Mr. Two, just uh, take different ways to be able to give back uh, and it was just it was very hard for me it was really a lot of fun our teachers I, I think really embrace it just, and it was the opportunity to be out in the community and, and see some folks and they all took on different things we had a group that went down to common grounds and they were changing light bulbs and, and cleaning uh, uh, snow plates down there for uh, down in common ground so it was really just a lot of different projects around the community throughout the day um, so it was just really a lot of fun and Kind of way it was for the police, and they got it. I didn't need it all, <laughs> and they deserve it. Um, but it was very much appreciated. So I also want to point out that I mean, that completely everyone is a super. Yeah. Yeah. I got more than normal compliments. Uh, two of them. Uh, the whole right there, the whole gym, saying "God bless the USA" at one point, which was wonderful. Uh, and then a compliment that it was really experience with her. So, everyone. Piggyback on Dr. Mr. Boba. Um, I was able, my husband's in the color guard, he's retired, that so we attend just because it's so dear to us. And uh, so we were able to go to all of them this year. And 
they were all amazing, both the elementaries and, of course, the high school. And we serendipitously had lunch with Mr. Bonds, but we didn't know Mr. Bonds, and we didn't know he was a guest speaker, and we just happened to sit down next to this awesome gentleman and talk to the whole lunch, and he, like, never told us he was the keynote speaker till the very end. He said, well, I got to go. I got to speak up at high school, and I'm like, oh, look at you. Are you sneaky? But anyway, it was just a really nice day. Yeah, thank you. Or a, a few days, actually. It was over a course of like, three days. Yeah. Thank you to the students. I mean, I think the principal reports could have gotten better. <laughs> no, no, very good. Thank you very much. Well, and that's what I wanted to say. Thank you, students. You did an amazing job. And for those of us who work here, I think our hearts became two sizes bigger. So thank you for that. And parents, uh, thanks for taking the time and bringing them tonight. We know you're busy, but th it was greatly appreciated, as you saw. It was awesome. Yeah. So thank you. Okay, the next item on my report, uh, there are a couple, there are some reports on earthquake and safe, earthquake and fire drills that we held. And something that's not on my report that I want to share is that Mrs. Jamie Ballou and Mr. Josh Gettinger completed their 18 and a half hours of new board training as required by Missouri law. Yep. I have a letter of congratulations for both. From Melissa Randall, Executive Director at MSBA, a certificate of completion, and you've earned your MSBA pin. <laughs> there you go. That is the end of my report. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, we have unfinished business. And the first item is the instructional program presentation, elementary special education. Let me get it pulled up. And I always like to list the teachers who do the presentations. I'm hoping that I caught all of them. So if I miss someone, I apologize. But there are a lot of people involved in this presentation. And before we start, in the presentation, you will see students' faces blurred out uh, for our FERPA, Family Educational Rights Privacy Act. Um, you will, however, see our, our co-teaching classrooms, so the faces in those co-teaching classrooms are not blurred out. So I just wanted to say that ahead of time in case you were wondering. There are four speech and language pathologists for the St. Genevieve District servicing students from early childhood all the way up to 12th grade. The SLPs include Jody Nagger, Lindsay Anderson, Ashley Rebelsberger, and Casey Search. We service a variety of students with many different eligibilities, such as language impairment, speech sound disorder, autism spectrum disorder, emotional disturbance, learning disabilities, and other health impairment. We help students work on language goals, which could include following directions, answering WH questions, formulating grammatically correct sentences, as well as social language goals, such as appropriately initiating, maintaining, and terminating conversations. We also help students produce certain speech sounds that they produce in error when speaking conversationally. We also work with students with fluency disorders or stuttering, and students who use alternative communication, such as pictures or a device to communicate. We can see students in the speech room or in their classrooms, depending on the student's needs. We also service students for RTI, Response to Intervention, which includes working on speech sounds for students who have not yet qualified for special education. Our roles include prevention, which is screenings for at-risk students, evaluation and identification of students with a speech or language disorder, treatment of students with speech and language disorders, as well as collaborating with teachers and parents.
Good evening. My name is Mary Hobler, and I'm the Occupational Therapist for the St. Genevieve School District. This is my second year as an OT in the school setting with previous experience in outpatient pediatrics, field nursing, and I've been a pre-K teacher assistant. I typically service children from early childhood all the way through high school age. And these types of services are either direct minutes, so I pull them out of class or margin the shin based on their needs, and or consult. The skills addressed by an OT is much more than addressing handwriting, fine letters, skills, typing skills, and post-graduation work skills. An OT looks at the underlying deficits affecting these skills, such as bilateral coordination, crossing the midline, reflex integration, visual motor coordination, visual perception, fine motor coordination and strength, ocular motor skills, sensory processing, posture, executive functioning skills, and so much more. A typical session for childhood spine motor delays. We usually start with some type of fine motor or upper extremity strengthening activity. So either using fair putty or they like to do a ring toss game where they lay on their stomach on a peanut ball. And then some form of visual motor activity, such as pain with pencil pads. And then I'll address our handwriting skills. So this I'll go in and see if they need visual cues, tactile cues, if they need to use a plant board, weighted pencil, or principles, or there's other things that we can provide. And then when addressing transition work skills for my older students, I look at executive functioning skills that enables us to plan, focus, multitask, and memorization skills. Um, there is a link provided down below if you want to look more into the school setting for an OT. And also, AOTA has a lot more resources out there. The TIMS program is an innovative learning environment that integrates traditional classroom teaching with behavioral counseling. Students in this setting, unfortunately, often come from very troubled, underprivileged, and poor socioeconomic homes, and subsequently have severe emotional behavioral disorder. In the past, these students would have been separated from their respective peers and likely placed in an alternative school setting or homebound. Our TILS programs facilitate keeping these students in school with their peers provides them with the emotional behavioral counseling services they desperately need and gives them a fun, safe learning environment. The unique, individualized student rewards program encourages students to work hard in a fun environment that strives to create more positive interactions with their peers and staff and gives them a safe space to learn how to express themselves in a more healthy way. And I'll point out before we move on, the TAILS program is a joint effort. We work with com the Community Counseling Center um, here in the community to run this program. Uh, so the picture that you see um, up towards the left with all the adults, that's, that's the team that w works with Mr. Cox, our teacher. Hello, I'm Mary Hobler, and Hello, my name is Kara Herman, and this is my fifth year as a special education teacher. My name is Danielle Hefner, and I am a first year special education teacher. Mrs. Herman and I teach in the two self contained special education classrooms at St. Genevieve Elementary. We both service K through 5 students who meet the following eligibility criteria autism spectrum disorder, emotionally disturbed, intellectual disability language impairment, other health impairment, and young child with developmental delay. We provide specialized instruction in the area of reading, math, written expression, adaptive skills, social skills, task focus, functional skills, and behavior management. The skills the students are working on and the level of support vary by the needs of that student. All of the students require small group or one-on-one -on -one support to be the most successful. Between our two classrooms, we have 14 students who are inside regular education classroom less than 40% of the time, and one student who is inside regular education classroom 40% to 79% of the time. We have attached a few videos and photos to provide a glimpse into our two classrooms.
Hello, here at St. Genevieve School District, there are three special education teachers who service grades kindergarten through second grade. At Bloomsdale Elementary, Cheryl Burke Bigler provides services for kindergarten through second grade students in the resource room. At St. Genevieve Elementary, Teresa Carroll provides services for kindergarten and first grade students in the resource room, and Kim Brown provides services for second grade students in the resource room and in a co-teaching classroom. While in the resource room, students are given specialized instruction in a small group setting. Students are instructed on adapted grade level material and are working on their IEP goals. Here the students are given additional resources to be successful. Second grade special education teacher Kim Brown and regular education teacher Katie Thompson work together in a co-teaching classroom. Together they use the parallel team and station teaching strategies to provide individual instruction through the use of small differentiated groupings and strategies made possible by having two teachers in the room. Co-teaching increases student engagement and provides more individual attention to students. This graph represents students kindergarten through second grade in the district and their eligibility area. The number of students serviced in the area of reading kindergarten through second grade at St. John Elementary is 19 and Bloomsdale Elementary is 9. Specialized instruction in reading includes basic reading, reading fluency, and reading comprehension. In the area of written expression, the number of students who receive services at St. John Elementary is 16 and Bloomsdale Elementary is 5. These students receive specialized instruction in alphabet naming, sentence structure, writing mechanics, inventive spelling, and paragraph writing. In the eligibility area of math, the number of students who receive services at St. John Elementary is 9 and Bloomsdale Elementary is 4. These students receive specialized instruction in number sense, math operations, word problems, place value, and applied math. In the area of social and emotional learners, the number of students who qualify at St. John Elementary is seven and Bloomsdale Elementary is two. These students receive specialized instruction in character traits and regulating, regulating their emotions, calming strategies, and social skills. In this video, you will see the third and fourth grade special education teachers from St. John Elementary and Bloomsdale Elementary as well. Whitney Hilbert teaches third grade special education at St. John Elementary, along with Ashley Bowman, who teaches fourth grade at St. John Elementary. And then myself, Paige James, teaches third and fourth grade at Bloomsdale Elementary. This graph represents the students in the third grade within the district and their eligibility areas. The green bar represents St. John Elementary and the blue bar represents Bloomsdale Elementary. We have a total of eight students that qualify in the area of reading, which include reading comprehension, reading fluency, and basic reading. Two in the area of math, four students in the area of written expression, two students in the area of emotional disturbance, and two in other health impairment. Within our district, these are the disabilities in which our students qualified in in the fourth grade. Between St. Jen and Bloomsdale Elementary, we have 13 students that qualified in the area of reading, nine students in the area of math, six students in the area of written expression, one student qualified under autism, and four students qualified under other health impairment. Station teaching allows us to divide the students into strategic groups. Two groups are teacher guided while the other groups work independently. This model increased instructional intensity, student engagement, and student focus. This model can be used for pre-teaching, reteaching and specially designed instruction.
During this math lesson, the co-teachers used the team teaching model to deliver the lesson, then moved into tiered groupings where each group works with the teacher for a specific amount of time, then the teachers move to another group. Parallel teaching allows us to split the class in half and both deliver the same content in a way that best fits the group's needs. These small groups make it easier to identify struggling students and provide appropriate interventions in a timely manner. The resource room is a separate setting aside from the general education classroom. Students come to access the educational materials in a manner at which best fits their individual needs. The special education teachers engage the students in lessons that include technology and manipulatives that enhance their learning experience and aid in their academic success. With my current caseload, I only teach one co-teaching math class and the rest of my day is mainly resource minutes. Um, I work on students' IEP goals along with adapting from their grade level curriculum and providing them the manipulatives and things they need to be successful. Hello, here's the stranger. Here at the St. Genevieve School District, we have two teachers who service our fifth grade special education students. The two teachers are Mrs. Portel and Mrs. Huck. There are currently 25 students who receive services from us. Um, on the graphics beyond on the presentation, you will see that there are 25 students um, in, in each service area which we provide those services. So on the light blue, you see the total amount of students in each service area. The darker blue, you will see how many students are in our code hot setting. And then in the orange, you will see how many students we provide that service to in the resource setting. On the team provided, you will see different resources and strategies that we use within uh, the students with inside of the code talk and with inside of the resource setting. Um, we use our district curriculum and provide modifications and accommodations to the students as they need them. Um, and then there are many different resources we use with inside of the resource setting. Um, and throughout all these settings, we conference with the students and we have them graph their progress. Um, so we're always having that collaborative conversation with them. And then lastly, one thing that we do for all of our fifth grade students before they transition to the middle school is invite the middle school special education teacher um, along with their process coordinator to our IEP meetings um, where we can have that collaborative conversation with the parent and their current teacher on students' current progress and current level, um, so we can discuss class options as they transition to the middle school. And before they transition to the middle school, we also take our fifth grade class to go tour the middle school, and so they can actually see what the middle school looks like, and then also see um, different class options that they have once they get there. And that's the end of their presentation. Oh. Quite a lot of work. Wow. Yes. Very specialized. <coughs> All right. Next on the agenda, we have set procedures for the annual school board election. Yes. On board docs, you have the actual resolution that needs to be adopted. Um, but tonight, we need you need to set the annual school board election for Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. We have three ter terms expiring, uh, Mr. Eric Bosler, Mr. James Kirshner, and Mrs. Martha Riesinger. Filing opens on Tuesday, December 6th at 8 a.m. Filing continues in district office on regular business days, so that's Monday through Friday when we're open. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Filing will not occur on days that the office is closed due to inclement weather. And filing will not occur on Friday, December 23rd and Monday, December 26th because the office will be closed. Filing ends on Tuesday, December 5th at 5 p.m. Tuesday, December 27th at 5 p.m. Sorry, I was looking at the 5 making sure I said that. Um, so there, I do have on this slide the address to district office if anyone is interested. Okay. 
All right. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, set procedures for annual school board election. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda under new business, we have addition of a behavior support specialist. Yes, and I'm thankful Mrs. Drury made it back. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so we are proposing that we add a one full-time district-wide behavior support specialist for this school year. Um, we would like to create the position tonight and hire at the December board meeting. Um, we have students identified with behaviors in special education that are in. Uh, we are seeing a lot more students who have a hard time self-regulating um, themselves. Um, so Mrs. Jury does have money from the American Rescue Plan for IDEA. IDEA, for those who do not know, means special education. Uh, so she has funds to address the learning gaps, the learning losses, uh, to help bring in someone to support our students and our staff deal with these escalated behaviors. Um, she has structured it so that we, we will use the ARP money this year, and with some other things that she's doing with some savings, we'll be able to cover next year. Um, so I did provide a link on this slide to the job description. The job description is also in Board Docs if anyone is interested. Um, Mrs. Jury, do you want to add anything? Um, no, I just, it will work, this position will work with students and will also support the teachers. Um, we're just mission education students and students with behaviors and learning gaps and, and just readjusting back to what we consider long as school. Um, I do also want to just um, acknowledge that again. She was huge in helping come up with what this is going to look like. Perhaps Dr. Police said this is K 12, correct? Correct. And will this position eliminate um, the special behaviors that we have? The contracted supports. This position get um, full benefits of the salary. Determined, I guess. It Is would it be teaching salary. Or? It would be placed on her certified salary schedule. So yes, full benefits. Is is the art money at like a something that's kind of always been out there? Is that a post COVID thing or? It's a post COVID. Okay. Yeah. I'm not really that familiar with it. So what? Uh, well, we've received art money under ESSER two. Okay. So we'll that, that yeah. Okay. Jamie, have you seen a increase, a large increase in like nonverbal, serious behavior issues? What I see and help me work through this with the This year, we have to spend them by September thirty, two thousand twenty three. And it's IEP specific, not 504s. Yeah. Okay. 
to a special occasion as part of the community involved in some evaluation and some consultation with helpful teams with intervention maybe for that evaluation. But so they will be a small level of work, not a big thing, but what would be possible to evaluate that. Okay. Maybe related but not specific I've heard you mentioned staff a few times. How valuable is it to have a social worker here in the district? <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the addition of a behavior support specialist for the district for the 2022-2023 school year. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have adjourned to executive rooms. Well, <laughs> I make a motion under revised Missouri statute 610.021, a motion that the Board of Education adjourn to a closed meeting with a closed record and a closed vote after a short break for the purpose of discussing and voting upon the following items of business. Hiring, firing, disciplining, or promoting of particular employees, scholastic probation, expulsion, or graduation of identifiable individuals, and preparation, including any discussions or work product on behalf of a public government body and its representatives for negotiations with employee groups. Okay, and then we have a roll call, roll call vote, or I do. Yes. I always forget that part, who calls it. <laughs> okay, so roll call vote, Jamie Ballou. Yes. Eric Bosler. Yes. David Bova. Yes. Carolyn Diesel. Yes. Josh Gettinger. Yes. James Kirshner. Mar Martha Riesinger. <laughs> All right, vote is carries 7-0. Thank you.